Ah, the 90s. A simpler time when playgrounds were wooden and gravy was clear. Crystal gravy. You've never seen a gravy like this. In all seriousness, the gravy wasn't clear, but the Pepsi was. As part of a consumer push for healthier products, the clear craze took off in a big way. Clear soap, clear Game Boys, and of course, clear Pepsi. Crystal Pepsi, to be exact. A soda that looked pure like water. A product that would go down in history as one of the most famous failed products of all time. Down there right at the bottom alongside Virtual Boy and Google Glass. But was it actually Pepsi's fault? See, there's a sinister tale behind the disappearance of this clear soda. A story of intentional sabotage by Coca-Cola. A kamikaze mission designed to assassinate the biggest competitor. It's a story that sounds too crazy to make up. A mystery that is 30 years in the making that we are gonna solve today. Did Coca-Cola intentionally sabotage their own products in an effort to take down Crystal Pepsi? We're gonna find out. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that's less than two years old, but still fondly remembers the 90s. Based on the demographics watching the channel, I'm the only one. I'm so old. Also, based on those same demographics, more of you should probably subscribe to the channel, since less than half of you watching right now have. Just saying, our content goes down smoother than crystal clear gravy. Anyway, I know what you're probably thinking. An episode dedicated to Crystal Pepsi in the year 2022 seems completely random. Totally out of touch, but honestly, it's not. Earlier this year, Pepsi re-released a special edition of their iconic failure to celebrate its 30-year anniversary. 300 lucky people won a six-pack of this iconic failed cold. Regardless of the taste, though, the whole thing got me curious about the history of Crystal Pepsi. Like, what went wrong, exactly? Were people just not interested in a clear soda, or was something else going on? Well, upon doing the research, I very quickly stumbled across an onslaught of viral headlines, Reddit posts, and Twitter threads, all about how Coca-Cola had gone on a suicide mission to try and take down Crystal Pepsi. No joke! As the story goes, they set up one of their signature sodas, Tab, to get an intentionally bad-tasting clear rebrand in order to taint the public perception of all clear beverages from that point forward, taking down not only Tab Clear, but Crystal Pepsi in the process. But that couldn't be true, right? Could self-sabotage like that have really worked? Or is this just a food myth that the internet's made into a fact? Today we dig into the murky history behind Crystal Pepsi to see what actually tanked this product. Was the failure of Crystal Pepsi an inevitability, or was it actually the most brilliant 4D chess move a food company could have ever made? Now, as I mentioned in the cold open, Clear things became a fad in the 90s because they were actually perceived as being healthier. Clear drink, pure content. It's an idea that, on the surface, seems absurd. After all, Crystal Pepsi has just as much sugar and calories as its brown counterparts. Not like this thing being clearer actually made it healthier, right? But, you know, for as absurd as the idea might seem, the drink being clear so it must be more pure is actually kinda true in Crystal Pepsi's case. This is basically what Pepsi looks like when you don't add food coloring. The brown that we all associate with cola drinks, it's not the actual color. Look at the ingredients for Pepsi and you'll see that it includes caramel color. Ditto for Coca-Cola. And those chemicals aren't always harmless. Previously, Coke and Pepsi got their color from a chemical called 4-methylimidazole, which is, as of 2011, considered to be a carcinogen by the state of California. Since nothing is gonna kill your sales worse than warning, this is known to cause cancer in the state of California, they decided to change the formula. So yeah, Crystal Pepsi, with its lack of food dyes, actually had fewer additives and was, in fact, a pure, healthier product. At least as healthy as a beverage can be when it's still packed with six 69 grams of sugar. Nice. 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 And they weren't the only ones to chase the clear trend either. Coors joined the clear drink fad with Zima, a clear beer that achieved the transparent look by running it through a charcoal filter. Unfortunately, the process that removed the color also removed most of the flavor. As culture writer Chuck Klosterman put it, Zima was, quote, the opposite of an acquired taste. Not to be outdone, Miller brought the world Miller clear beer, which unsurprisingly also wound up to be a big flop. But while the world clearly wasn't ready for clear, tasteless beer, they eagerly seemed to lap up Crystal Pepsi. Pepsi invested 40 million dollars in marketing, introducing the world to the clear cola in the iconic Super Bowl ad featuring Van Halen, which might just be the most 90s thing that you watch all week. <laughs> 
But apparently that big marketing push paid off. Crystal Pepsi immediately captured 1% of the soft drink market, which, according to the publisher of Beverage Digest, was the equivalent of $474 million in retail sales. Not too shabby for a brand new drink. So, where did it go wrong? If sales were so strong, why would it disappear a year later? Enter Coke. The ascent of Crystal Pepsi spelled bad news for Coca-Cola. They were basically left with two options, neither of which were particularly good. They could either ignore the clear drink trend and let Crystal Pepsi dominate the newly created market for clear cola, or they could come up with a clear version of Coke themselves, thereby validating Pepsi's idea and setting themselves up as a copycat in the public eye. Either approach seemed like admitting defeat, so Coca-Cola went with option three, self-destruct. Rather than trying to compete with Crystal Pepsi and cash in themselves, Coca-Cola would maliciously destroy the entire clear drink market. If we can't have a clear soda, then no one can. So what was the plan? Well, Sergio Zeman, chief marketing officer of Coca-Cola, planned to release a product that would fail on purpose. Tab clear. Remember tab? No, I don't either, to be honest. It was Coca-Cola's first diet drink, marketed to the ladies who wanted to stay in shape to keep their man interested. Keeping your shape in shape has its rewards. Enjoy tab and be a mind sticker. Ah, uh, casual sexism. The best way to sell your food product. Anyway, Tab was popular during the 60s and 70s, but by the 90s, it was on its way out thanks to Diet Coke. And here was the evil genius of Coca-Cola's plan to destroy Pepsi. Rather than try to create a strong competitor to Crystal Pepsi, they intentionally created a weak one. They set themselves up to lose on purpose by releasing the least desirable version of a clear soda. Why would they do such a thing? Well, when Coca-Cola released Tab Clear, grocery stores did the logical thing and placed it right next to Crystal Pepsi. And as a result, Crystal Pepsi became associated with Tab Clear in the eyes of the public. Something that, according to Sergio Zeman, was intentional. Quote, Pepsi was basically gonna say Crystal Pepsi was a mainstream drink. It has all this great taste. And we, Coca-Cola, said no. Crystal Pepsi is actually a diet drink. Even though it wasn't. Because Tab had the attributes of diet, which was its demise. Within three or five months, Tab Clear was dead, and so was Crystal Pepsi. Tab Clear was deliberately sent out to grocery store shelves to die. And when it did, did, it succeeded in taking Crystal Pepsi down with it. Just like that, Pepsi's flashy new product that had been poised to bring in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue per year was doomed. In the words of Coca-Cola's chief marketing officer, quote, we did a kamikaze on them, commit suicide, and kill them in the process. The rad new trend of clear cola was suddenly now nothing but a joke. It's a cool story of underhanded corporate sabotage, of one business's brilliant maneuvers to try and take down their competition. Honestly, it is no surprise that this story would go on to become a viral hit across the internet. And yet, I think it's a lie. I think that this was all just revisionist history trying to make someone look all galaxy brain, when in truth he was all smooth brain the entire time. I also think it's a prime example of having to double check where the information that you're getting online is coming from. First off, it's important to consider the source of the information. This story about Coca-Cola's brilliant suicide mission all comes from one guy, Sergio Zeman, Coca-Cola's chief marketing officer. It's true, he would know the subject better than anyone else, but he'd also have the biggest incentive to lie about it, since the story he's telling is basically trying to spin a failed product into an intentional act of brilliance. And here's the thing, Tab Clear wouldn't be his only massive mistake. According to Fortune Magazine, back in the 80s, Zeman was also the executive who pushed to replace Coke's signature flavor. You know, the taste that had been the market leader for the last 98 years, with a different tasting cola flavor called New Coke. Now considered to be one of the biggest marketing blunders in history, Zeman was also the mastermind behind Fruitopia, another 90s Coca-Cola product that was off the shelves less than a decade later. So for him to come in and say, hey guys, I know that it seems like I was behind two of the biggest failed product launches of all time, but that second one, totally on purpose. Absolutely, cross my heart, hope to die. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's lying, but it does mean that we should probably be skeptical. And skeptical I was, so I decided to dig into the facts around Tab Clear, which is where things got even more fishy. For example, consider the basic timeline. Pepsi spent $40 million marketing Crystal Pepsi in 1993, but it's impossible for Tab Clear to have been developed as a reaction to the sudden popularity of the drink, considering Tab Clear first released in the US in December of 1992. Another part of Zeman's story that seems suspicious is the idea that he got the public to associate Crystal Pepsi with bad tasting diet drinks by putting Tab next to it, when Diet Crystal Pepsi was in fact a very real thing that was offered right alongside regular Crystal Pepsi in the same ads. So clearly Pepsi themselves didn't think that having a clear Diet Cola sitting next to Crystal Pepsi on the shelf would taint 
hate the brand, why would the completely unrelated Tab do it instead? Here's another part of the Zeman story that doesn't add up. The entire reason that Tab Clear was sent out to store shelves was so it could be placed next to Crystal Pepsi, right? But Tab Clear was released in Japan in March of 1993, a country where Crystal Pepsi had no presence. It makes no sense if you believe that Tab Clear was sent out to sabotage Crystal Pepsi, but that move makes total sense if you believe the more obvious conclusion that Tab Clear was just another product trying to find an audience of people who would buy it. In fact, the more you look at the actual history behind Tab Clear, the more it looks like any other product rollout. For example, they initially released Tab Clear in 10 test markets before eventually going wide with it after a positive reception. If the entire purpose was to launch an intentionally bad product, why bother seeing whether people liked it? Why wouldn't you just immediately ship it out everywhere to torpedo your competitor? Head of Soviet forces has served Tab Clear in very cold glass, which sticks to his lip. He complains of glass frost. His generals hear glasnost. The Berlin Wall falls. Sorry, Tab Clear, you weren't responsible for the fall of the Berlin Wall, and you weren't responsible for the downfall of Crystal Pepsi. And hey, if the entire reason you existed was to bring down your competitor, why would you continue to pour more of your own marketing dollars into TV advertisements like that in 1994, well after Crystal Pepsi was in its decline? But you want to know the evidence point that really seals the deal? Look at it. The entire point of Tab Clear is that it's a clear beverage, but it was only sold in opaque aluminum cans. Surely, if the goal was for people to confuse Tab Clear with Crystal Pepsi, they would have at least bothered to make them look similar. I guess that's just the kind of marketing brilliance I'd expect from a guy who thought that new Coke was a good idea. So, if it wasn't Tab Clear, then what did it? What tanked Crystal Pepsi? Well, earlier I mentioned that analysts estimated Crystal Pepsi's potential annual revenue to be $474 million in retail sales. Sounds like a huge number. Nearly half a billion. But that estimate was also from March of 1993, when the product had only been out for several months and had just had itself a massive Super Bowl push. That turned out to be its best-selling months. Turns out Crystal Pepsi's market share declined to half of its previous levels by the end of 1993. People were willing to give the product a try, they just didn't like it and they didn't stick around. And you see, that's the real truth here. Yum! Brands chairman David C. Novak is credited with introducing the Crystal Pepsi concept, and in an interview with Fast Company, he said this, quote, I still think it's the best idea I ever had and the worst executed. People were saying we should should stop and address some issues along the way, and they were right. It would have been nice if I'd made sure the product tasted good." End quote. And you see, that's just it. It tasted bad. At best, it was passable. But also weird, because it was clear. Watch any online review of Crystal Pepsi, and that's exactly the sentiment that you see. It tastes like Pepsi <laughs> with an aftertaste of modeling clay. It started at Pepsi and then went blah. I don't remember Crystal Pepsi tasting anything like cola. I don't think it tastes like Pepsi. It was the only thing available and I was really <laughs> thirsty. I would drink crystal clear Pepsi again, but I wouldn't go out and buy it. It's messing with my brain. I don't know, my eyes and my taste buds like are not connecting on this. Yeah, it like tastes like cola candy smells. Don't believe the headlines, my friends. In the end, the only thing that killed Crystal Pepsi was Crystal Pepsi itself. Sorry, Coca-Cola marketing guy. You have enough failures to your name, you don't get to claim this one too. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bottoms up. <laughs>